Now that we know what alkalinity is, let's make our water alkaline. Typically we can do this by adding a tiny bit of calcium, magnesium, or baking soda. Since this water does not contain a buffer, its pH will rise dramatically. So let's, let's do a test. Uh, we've got here some pH strips. Uh, and I'll help us read all of those pH strips. We have tap water, reverse osmosis water, and some of our sample, which I haven't mixed in yet. Uh, so we are about to do that. Now, for our tap water, we should expect a pretty neutral pH. So let's just go ahead and throw that in. No mixing needed because, again, it's just water. Let's do the same for our reverse osmosis water. Let's just throw in a pH strip. Just to, you know, check that, uh, the, see what the difference is between those two. And finally, we've got our sample. So let's just add a tiny bit of salt to our sample. And we will need to mix that. And we will also add just a tiny, tiny pinch of baking soda. Maybe I'll grab a tiny bit more just to make sure we get a good reading. So there's our baking soda. Baking soda's in now. Let's give it a good shake up in there. Make sure our water is well, or our baking soda is well dissolved. Let's throw in our pH strip now. See what we get for our results. Okay, so the tap water should be about ready now. Our reverse osmosis water should also be just about ready. And finally we've got our sample water. And you see here the clearest indicator, which according to our handy dandy pH strip measurement device is this green color. So we can see here before the pH strip was used it was nice and yellow. It turned slightly green here. It barely changed color there and here it turned a dark green. It looks like that's the main difference. Maybe a little bit in the pH as well. It looks like this is a the difference in pH there is a little high. So let's take a look again. Let's take a look at what each one of these numbers mean. The first number is free chlorine. So we can see that there's almost no free chlorine parts per million in any of these. So hardly any chlorine in these. Uh, this is more for testing a pool water that you would see a high chlor uh, chlorine content. Now let's take a look at that alkalinity. So that alkalinity, so the next the next number on here is alkalinity. So we see here we get kind of a number this is fairly high alkaline water considering it came from my tap. Um, and then we also have the pH which seems to be right about maybe a little bit on the higher end of things. And finally we have cyanic acid which is just about zero. Now let's take a look at that compared to our RO water. We see that our alkaline content in our RO water is significantly lower um, than in our tap water. Whoops, I touched this so now I've messed, messed some things up. But we can see that our pH was a little bit, it was actually fairly low. Now our pH was about neutral. You can see where I touched it with my hand on accident. Must be the baking soda. Um, and then the, the cyanic acid is also pretty much zero. Now I'll try not to touch the pH strip on our next one. Here we see a very high alkaline content, extremely high. It's actually off the charts. Um, for our pH we are eh, probably around yeah, probably around 9 according to this pH strip and our cyanic acid is also, it's actually a little bit higher than the rest, maybe around 40, yeah, it looks like about 40, somewhere around there. So there are our three pH strips. Again, I messed it up a little bit by touching them, but that should give us a good result so we can see very clearly here that this, that just a pinch of baking soda really shot up our alkaline content and it really shot up our pH. So when you buy, um, when you buy alkaline water, you're really just buying water with a little bit of salt and a little bit of baking soda or something else to make it a fairly high pH content.